and welcome to the Lukati Halachas 10 minute Parsha Shir for Parshas Vayeshev, Tafshin Peh. So, this week's Parsha begins talking about the offspring of Yaakov. And it explains that Yosef was 17 years old and he was shepherding the flock with his brothers. But the way that, that this Pasuk starts says, Ele told us Yaakov, these are the offspring of Yaakov, Yosef, Ben Shvas Reshama. Yosef was 17 years old. So, the main question in the beginning of this week's parsha is why, why is Yosef listed right after these are the generations, these are the offspring of Yaakov? Yosef. How is it Yosef? And how does it connect to the previous parsha and what happened just, just earlier? So Reb Nassim says like this, in Oiz Beis, in the Likuti Halachas Chumash, says, Rabbi Seinu Zal, Amar al Yaakov Avinu, Chazal say about Yaakov that Yaakov shehu bechinas etzem nekudas emes. Yaakov is the embodiment of the midah of truth, emes. Like the pasuk says, titen emes leYaakov, that that emes is given to Yaakov. Yaakov is truth, absolute truth. And so when Yaakov saw the armies of Yais, of of Esav coming the evil armies of Esau and the ministers and the generals, he was very afraid. And so he said, what's going to be? It looks like, how, how, how am I going to be able to, who is going to be able to conquer these tremendous armies? So what does it say after that? It says, Eli told us Yaakov, Yosef, that Yosef is the offspring of Yaakov. Yosef is the answer. Yosef is how we're going to trample and conquer all of the armies of, of Esau. So, and uh, it's brought over there. One spark can come from, from Yosef that is going to burn up all of Esau and all of the evil armies and all of the negativity. And Rashi brings a mushal from a medrash over there in the Davar Acher part of Rashi. It says it's a mushal to a flax merchant who comes into town with camels carrying all of his flax. And the blacksmith looks up and says, where is he going to put all of this flax? Where are you going to put all this flax? And a certain smart person beside him says, don't you know that with one, one spark from your bellows that makes your fire, one spark could burn up all of that flax. And, and that's the medrash. And it goes on to say, Yeah, the Hapashtani, so too. The Pasuk says that Yaakov is Esh, and Yosef is Lehava, is flames, and Esav is Kash. Esav is straw. Right? And this, this, this um, Medrash, this Mashal, is explaining to us something about the existence of Yaakov, Yosef, and Esav that the fire and the flames of Yosef is able to, to, to burn up the negativity of Esau. And somehow it relates to Yaakov being MS, being truth. So let's see, let's see how we can understand this. The first most important thing to know is that there's two types of truth in the way that Rabbi Nachman explains truth. The first is called MS Lamitoi, ultimate truth. And this truth is connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to Hashem in His infinite, in His infinity. Meaning, before any creation, before we can talk about any other existence, just knowing what Kabbalah calls the existence before any creation, it was just Or Ein Soif HaPashit, the infinite, unending light of Hashem. One simple existence that took up everything. Nothing else could exist at the same time, just the oneness of the light of Hashem. And when you only have the oneness of the, of the light of Hashem, you have complete and 100% truth. There's no other possibility for anything else to exist but the complete truth of Hashem. Once creation began, and there began to be different existences, even in the realm of Kabbalah, it went from absolute oneness to then we had all of a sudden Chachma and Bina, Chesed and Gevura, opposing forces, right? Certainly, once people started to being created, and we have now more than one ratzon, more than one will, opposing each other, we now have the opportunity, 
for there to be more than one will and therefore more than one truth. If I could give an example that everyone can identify with, I'm sure. Certainly anyone who's in a husband and wife relationship. Let's just use a classic view of a husband and wife. Just I know the husband and wives are very different nowadays and wives are career people and making money and sometimes husbands are house husbands, right? But let's just use the classic view of husband and wife just to, to make the, the example simple. So let's say you have a husband, theoretically, who doesn't put his stuff away and he leaves dishes out and he leaves his socks on the floor. He leaves things in different places. I've been told that some men do this. Um, and so the wife comes to him and says, what are you doing? Why do you have to leave your stuff all around? Can't you clean up after yourself? Right? And so what happens to the husband? He gets very upset. He's feeling attacked. His wife is showing him something that he's doing wrong, and it is wrong. And so he feels vulnerable and attacked. So what does he do? He goes on the offensive. And you know what he says? He says, I can't believe she's picking on me, nitpicking on these little things. When I'm out the whole day earning money, I'm working so hard to put food on the table, to pay for our house, to pay for our car, the clothes, everything. And I come home and she's picking on me for these little things, right? From his perspective, his truth is that he's being unfairly picked on. And so he argues with his wife. And in the wife's mind, she's thinking, how can he, how can he leave stuff around? Doesn't he know that I spend my whole day taking care of the house? And I get the kids dressed and I get them off to school. And then I'm cooking lunch, dinner, breakfast. And every time, after every step I have to clean. And then the kids make a mess and I have to clean up the whole house after them. And there's one more guy I have to clean up after. Doesn't he care that I put in so much work? It's like he doesn't even notice. It's like he doesn't even care about me at all. And doesn't even appreciate what I do. And that's her truth. So we have these two subjective truths that battle against each other. And, 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 and what happens, what can happen, is that the egos will get stronger to protect their vulnerability, vulnerability and the fight will get even worse. And then in the future, you know, lies will come out of it. Sheker will come out of this because the husband will say, no, that's not mine. I didn't leave that out. Must have been one of the kids. Why? Because he doesn't want to get involved in this, in this fighting, in this negativity. So two different wills coming, coming against each other can lead to two different subjective truths. And then after that can even start to lead to lies, to sheker. So we have the ultimate truth of Hashem, which is 100% oneness and truth. And then when we have separate wills, separate, separate existences, we create subjective truths and then lies, God forbid. Okay, that's the background. So what happened over here? This flax merchant comes in. Says Reb Nassim that this flax merchant is really hinting to Cain, from the Cain and Abel story, Cain. Because what did Cain's, Cain's offering that he brought to Hashem was flax, was, was pishtan, was flax. So that's what this is referring to. And Cain was the first machlekes, was the first place where we had two wheels going against each other, where we had a machloikis, and it of course ended in Cain killing his brother in such negativity. And so that is the root of all future differences of opinion, wills, and machloikis fighting, arguing, and of course, different truths, and even lies. Everything stems from that, from, from that original source. So the, the flax merchant represents Cain. And... And, and, and in the story, in, in, the, in the mushal, he said that one spark can come and ignite all of that flax and burn it all up. Because that flax represents lies and represents the opposite of truth and represents the negativity of Esau and of all his myriad of soldiers and officers who were coming in, in force like, like an army of negativity and spiritual uncleanliness and evil coming into the world. And Yaakov said, how can we conquer this? How can we, how can we be successful over here? And the answer is, Eile told us Yaakov, Yosef. The answer is Yosef HaTzadik. Yosef is the paradigm of the Tzadik. 
of tzaddikim in the world. Tzaddikim are the ones that bring in emes into the world. In the Lashon of Reb Nassim, he says, like this, Ki kushtakai, truth stands up. Ki nitzoitz echad mi kedusha sa emes. One spark from the kedusha of the truth. Umi kedusha zor tera sa yamitis. And from one spark from the true Torah of a tzaddik, shemeir umitz noitzeitz belev ish Yisraeli, that illuminates and sparks and lights up the heart of a Jew. Hechafetz be'emetz, the a Jew that desires emes. Umate daitu lavavoy, and he bends his heart and draws himself towards emes la mitoy, the ultimate truth. This is what the tzaddik brings into the world. This is what Yosef brought into the world. So the verse that said, Beis Yaakov Eish, Beis Yosef lahava, the Esav is kash. That means that the house of Yaakov is fire. The house of Joseph is flames. And Esav is straw waiting to be burned. Yosef is the answer to combat the negativity, to combat the lies, to combat the spiritual impurity and evil of Esav. Yosef at Tzadik, the paradigm of Tzadik. So for us, it means that when we're in those situations where we find ourselves dealing with either lies or negativity or our own subjective truths, when we find ourselves in those arguments where we're facing a battle of wills, when we're looking at our own character traits and trying to get to the bottom of of what is our true feelings and our true character traits and our true existence, we have the light of tzaddikim to guide us. We have the words of Rabbi Nachman and the lessons of Rabbi Nachman to light us up to put us on the pack of tru- a path of truth. We have the words of Reb Nassan that we're learning right now to put us on the path of truth. And it's these words that can help us that when a husband and wife are having an argument, instead of getting their egos up and fighting against each other, they can both look and say, you know what? Say to each other, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling very, like I'm getting, I'm, I'm starting to react. I can feel like, like I'm attacked. And I realize that I'm doing something wrong. And I need to think about it. I need to understand what it is. I need to understand the MS of what Hashem is talking to me right now, the message that Hashem is giving me. Because what Hashem, what's happening to me right now is a message from Hashem. I'm turning to the truth of truths. I'm recognizing that right now, this event that's taking place where we're about to have an argument is nothing but a test from Hashem, a message from Hashem to help us both to grow and understand something about ourselves and, and fix our relationship fix our character traits, and through this, come together in a beautiful way and bring shalom, the opposite of machlekes. Take things that are separate and bring them closer to one, as opposed to take things that should be together and bring them and, and, ta- and, and separate them. We should, every, everything in our lives should be focused on emes. I mean, Nachman says that we can only have emuna through emes. We should see only in the world that everything comes from Hashem. And to look for that truth, that everything is a message from Hashem. And through that, we should unite together in unity and bring everything back to the one, to the truth of Hashem. This is Hashem. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos.